Hi, welcome back to my mom's Chinese recipes. Today we are going to be making a specialty dish from the province of Fujian. This is the classic fish ball. The outside is fluffy, made mostly with fish, and the inside is saucy and meaty. We are very excited to share this recipe with you. Let's get started. This dish does have a high requirement for the ingredient, so it's very important that we're using fresh fish that you fillet yourself because that's how you get the best texture and taste. So right now I'm using a sea bass. This is the way I like to fillet fish, but feel free to do it in a way you're comfortable with. So I'm just cutting off the head right behind the gill, and then I like to cut it horizontally down the center, making a slit as so and then slicing just above the middle central bone. This allows me to get a very clean cut and not waste any meat. Once I have both fillets, I'm just going to slice down the edge to remove any excess bones. I am going to use a spoon that's quite thin so that I can use it to scrape off the meat. So I'm just laying down my filet and I'm going to scrape it away against the grain of the flesh. And this method will allow you to get very nice, stringy, textured fish flesh. And it looks like this. This is a special technique and I will explain why we can't just blend it later. So try your best to get as much of the fish off of the skin as possible. And of course, you can save any of the discards for making soup or stock. I got about 300 grams of fish flesh out of a sea bass that was 750 grams. It's very important that you chop it by hand and not use a machine because the machine will break the texture of the fish and you won't get that chewy tenderness. Keep chopping and you can remove any stringy bits as you go. And you know you're done when you achieve this shiny texture and you no longer see any large pieces of flesh. We're going to transfer over the chopped fish flesh into a mixer. This is the paddle setting I'm using. Make sure you're not using the slicer because that will cut up the fish flesh and affect the texture. We're going to season with half a teaspoon of salt. Slowly add in 150 milliliters of water, a little bit at a time, pausing in between to give it a chance to incorporate before you add more. You can also cover it with a guard so that it doesn't splash. Season with about two teaspoons of fish sauce for flavor. Make sure that you are beating enough fish. If you don't have enough in the mixer, it might not beat as effectively. So periodically, I am scraping the sides to make sure that all of it is being uh, beaten enough. I'm still finishing up my water. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes, so make sure that you really spread out the water. This is the texture we're looking for, and you can test it out by dropping it into a bowl of water. If it floats up, then it's ready. If it doesn't float up, it's possible that the fish is not fresh enough or you didn't chop it finely enough. Now we are going to add in our sweet potato powder or cornstarch. About 50 grams will do. You can add this all in at once. Now beat for another 15 to 20 minutes on medium to high speed. This is the key process allowing it to gain elasticity. This is the final texture. You can see that it's very soft, but also quite bouncy. And you can kind of mold this into a ball. We are going to test it again in a bowl of cold water. Unlike the first time, because we added in the starch, it should only float halfway. So semi-buoyant texture and you know it's ready. 
The rest is the easy part. This is a Fujoni specialty filling. We have a very saucy, rather salty filling made with pork, and it will be balanced out with the fish. So this is my seasoning. I find it's the most efficient to divide the fillings up ahead of time into little tiny balls. And I like to shape my fish ball batter with a tablespoon. So I'm just taking a little bit with my hand, roughly this size. And then I am going to make a divot in the center. Put in the meat filling. Wrap it around like this with my thumb. Just gently smoothing the edges over to form the top. And then very slowly, I'm going to squeeze it out by forming a circle with my index and my thumb. At this point, you're going to dip your tablespoon in some cold water and then scoop up the fish ball. At this point, the fish batter has fully coated the meaty center. And you have the first one. And we're going to just place it into a pot of cold water so that they don't stick to each other. Okay, we're going to repeat that again. Step one is to grab your fish batter, make a divot in a puddle, and then we're going to fill in our meaty center right in there. And then very slowly, you're going to start pulling up the fish batter. And then when you have gathered enough, you're going to form a circle and then really push up so that a sphere forms. And then with the wet tablespoon, you're going to scoop it into a ball form, and then very gently place it into a pot of cold water. Now we have a pot and we are going to bring this to a boil. To keep the fish balls fully intact, we want to make sure that we don't exceed medium low heat. You want to slowly bring it to a simmer and to not overcrowd the pot. When you feel like the water is almost boiling, move it around a little bit. At this point, the fish ball would have solidified already, so you should be okay with gently jiggling them around like this. You can remove the foam at this point. Once the water is fully boiled, you are going to push them around and let it cook for about three to five minutes. And at this point, it is fully cooked and they're super buoyant. This made about 20 fish balls. You can also freeze this after making a large batch and you would want to freeze it after you've cooked it. To make the seasoning, what we like is a combination of salt, white pepper or chili pepper, some scallion, some fish sauce and some white vinegar. This is the most classic way we like to enjoy this dish. And then you're just going to add in the hot water that was used to cook the fish balls. If you like the taste very light, you can add more water. But if you wanted a stronger taste, you can just add a couple tablespoons like we did. And then it is ready. You can find fish balls similar to this in a lot of coastal cities in China. But this one is really special because of the filling. And it is a flavor that is really nostalgic to our family. With that said, if the filling part is intimidating for you, you can also enjoy the fish ball on its own without the filling. The fish ball sold at the stores often have a lot of additives in it and it's usually quite low in the fish percentage but since this is homemade you can see that the exterior is super fluffy and made with mostly fish so the flavor is really really delicious. We hope you will give it a try.